Hello and welcome to Equations. This is Neil. I'm a mathematician and a math educator. And in my video series, I try to teach mathematics in a way that would not only make it easy and simple to understand, but it also show you the beauty of the subject and inspire you to fall in love with it. In this tutorial, we will learn two very simple proofs of the fact that the sum of the reciprocal of natural numbers is divergent. In other words, its sum is infinity. The harmonic series is the introduction or the gateway to the world of analysis. If you recall, in school level mathematics, the very first arithmetic progression that we learn about is the sequence of natural numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot dot dot. In a similar way, when it comes to analysis, the very first sequence that we learn about is the sequence of the sum of the reciprocal of natural numbers 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 and so on. So let us learn the proof that the harmonic series is divergent. We will learn two different proofs. The first proof does not require any knowledge of calculus. We will be able to understand the proof using only school level mathematical concepts. In the second proof we will use very very elementary or basic level of calculus. The first version of the proof it goes all the way back to the year 1350 AD. This proof was discovered by a French philosopher by the name Nicole Oresme. So here is his version of the proof. We leave 1 and 1 by 2 and we are going to club all the remaining numbers into groups in such a way that each group is of size twice the size of the previous group. So our first group will be 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4. The size of this is 2. Our next group will therefore be size twice that of the previous group which is 2 times 2 this is 4 so we are going to club the next four numbers 1 by 5 1 by 6 1 by 7 and 1 by 8 into a group similarly we will be clubbing the next 4 into 2 which is the next 8 number from 1 by 9 to all the way up to 1 by 16 into the next group and so on so this is not visible on the screen but that is the concept so we are creating groups of size twice the size of the previous group. Our first group is of size 2, it includes 1 by 3 and 1 by 4. Our second group is of size 4 and it includes a number from 1 by 5 to 1 by 8. Our third group is of size 8 and it includes the number from 1 by 9 to 1 by 16 and so on. Now the trick is to replace each number in each group with the quantity which is the smallest number of that group. For example, the smallest number of the first group is 1 by 4. The smallest number of the second group is 1 by 8. Similarly, the smallest number of the third group will be 1 by 16. That of the next group will be 1 by 32 and so on. So we write the sum will be greater than 1 plus 1 by 2 plus the first group has 1 by 3 and 1 by 4. So we replace this with 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4. This is because 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 this quantity will always be less than 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4. That is because 4 is greater than 3, so its reciprocal 1 by 4 will always be less than 1 by 3. Now let us go to the next group, which is 1 by 5 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 7 plus 1 by 8. In this group, each of this number will be greater than or equal to 1 by 8. This is because 8 is the largest number in the denominator. So, if we replace each of these numbers from 1 by 5 to 1 by 8 by 1 by 8, then it will make the quantity on the right-hand side even lesser than our left-hand side, which is S. Similarly, if we replace all the numbers from 1 by 9 to 1 by 16 with 1 by 16, then the quantity on the right-hand side will be even lesser than our left-hand side, S. Now, let us add up the quantities inside each group. The first group has two 1 by 4s, so adding them up we get 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4, which is equal to 1 by 2. The next group, it has four 1 by 8s, so when we add them up, we get 4 times 1 by 8, which is equal to 1 by 2. So the first two groups, they give us 1 by 2 each. The next group, it will have eight 1 by 16s, so if we add them up, then we'll get 8 times 1 by 16, which is again equal to 1 by 2. And if we continue this process, we'll see that for every group that we have, the group total will always be equal to 1 by 2. So, 
our right hand side is the sum of infinitely many 1 by 2's whereas our left hand side is equal to s and we know that the left hand side is greater than our right hand side in other words the left hand side is greater than the sum of 1 plus infinitely many 1 by 2's and we know that this approaches or tends to infinity so our left hand side is greater than a quantity which approaches infinity and this is only possible if the left hand side itself approaches infinity thus we have proved that the sum of the reciprocal of the natural numbers in other words the infinite harmonic series is divergent in other words this sum approaches infinity so this completes our first proof that the harmonic series is divergent however this proof does not tell us the true rate at which the harmonic series approaches infinity in other words we do not know for sure what is the exact growth rate of the harmonic series so this brings us to our second proof. In our second proof, we will not only show that the harmonic series is divergent, but also we will get a better idea of how quickly or how slowly does it approach infinity. First, let us define the quantity Hn, which is equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 plus dot 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 up till 1 by n. So Hn is the sum of the first n terms of the harmonic series. I repeat hn is the sum of the first n terms of the harmonic series hn is actually known as the harmonic number let us draw a graph to represent each term of the harmonics number separately so the first term is one so we represent it by a dot in the graph there it is the second term is 1 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.5 and we represent it by the second dot in our graph the third term is 1 by 3 this is approximately equal to 0 0.33 and we represent it by the third dot and so on so every term of the harmonic series is represented by a dot in this graph next what we do is we connect each of these dots with a rectangle as shown in the diagram so I've connected each of these dots with a rectangle so each rectangle represents the magnitude of the corresponding term of the harmonic sequence i repeat each rectangle represents the magnitude of the corresponding term of the harmonic series for example the height of the fifth rectangle will be equal to 1 by 5 which corresponds to the fifth term of the harmonic series now i'm going to draw a curve which passes through each of my original dots so i've connected them as shown in the figure with a smooth curve what will be the equation of this curve the equation of this curve will of course be y equal to 1 by x this is because each of my original dots were generated by representing the reciprocal of the natural number in a graphical form so its equation will obviously be y equal to 1 by x notice that from the point x equal to 1 the curve lies inside the rectangles the curve never crosses and goes outside any of the corresponding rectangle it always lies inside this property will be very useful in our proof the total area of the rectangles will be 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus dot 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 up till 1 by n this is because the width of each rectangle is 1 whereas its height is equal to 1 by n corresponding to each natural number n so the total area of the rectangle will be 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus dot 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 up till 1 by n which is nothing but hn so the total area of the rectangle is equal to our harmonic number hn what is the area under the curve from the point x equal to 1 to x equal to n we can calculate the area under the curve using integral calculus the formula for the area under this curve will be integration from 1 to n plus 1 dx by x I repeat the area under the curve will be integration from 1 to n plus 1 dx by x and if we do this integration we get log of n plus 1 now we are going to compare the total area of the rectangles with the total area under the curve from the point x equal to 1 to x equal to n as discussed earlier the curve lies entirely under the rectangle so the area of the curve or the area under the curve will always be less than the total area of the rectangles what is the total area of the rectangles 
it is hn and what is the total area under the curve it is log of n plus 1 so hn must be greater than log of n plus 1 in other words the sum of the reciprocal of the first n natural number must be greater than log of n plus 1 which itself is greater than log of n so in general we get that hn is greater than log of n so a harmonic number is greater than log of n but log of n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity so it means that our harmonic number itself must tend to infinity as n tends to infinity moreover this also proves that our harmonic number must grow at least as fast as the logarithm of n with this we come to the end of this tutorial i hope that you have been able to follow and understand both these proofs in the next tutorial, I will see you with another very interesting topic in mathematics. Please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe this channel. Also, if you have any topic that you would want me to cover, please do not forget to mention it in the comments. Bye bye and see you next time.